Today, in our January February preview of the Science and Technology Review, we are talking about targets. When experiments are conducted at the National Ignition Facility, huge teams of physicists, technicians, and engineers all work together to make sure that the many parts of the experiment are ready to go and that everything goes according to plan. But one of the most crucial elements of any experiment involving a laser beam is the target. Now, depending on what researchers are looking to explore, the targets may contain different specialized material and may be structured differently. Every target is so tiny that adjustments on a scale of micrometers can make a big difference in function. Since everything is so small, it all has to be put together here under microscopes in what's called a clean room. Places like this have special vents that suck debris out of the air so that minute particles like dust won't disturb the measurements of the machines or contaminate the targets themselves. Hence why I'm wearing this costume, which technicians affectionately call a bunny suit. Targets are actually so fragile that a technician can't even handle it with tweezers because that would damage it. Instead, they use a device about the size of a pen that uses a vacuum suction force to hold the piece as they manipulate it. So just to get a sense of the range of materials and structures of targets that are used for different NIF experiments, this issues feature looks at five different targets in detail. Targets that are specially made for extremely high pressure experiments. One of the things that makes a strength target different from many targets is that instead of putting the physics package at the center of a whole ROM, it is actually mounted on the side of a whole ROM. The target itself uh, has an x-ray backlighter that's going to image material that we've ramp compressed to ultra high pressures and it's going to generate an x-ray image of that material under the conditions that we desire to create. Targets designed to generate a fusion reaction. So the end goal for fusion is to achieve a net energy gain between energy input and the energy released during the fusion reaction. For this aim we use a target that consists of a fuel capsule that contains deuterium tritium fuel uh, and a whole realm in which the capsule is suspended that uh, turns the laser into x-rays that drive the fuel pellet and uh, compress it. Targets made for experiments that aim to replicate astrophysical phenomena. So we're studying the Eagle Nebula, um, a very famous uh, set of pillars. The target represents the initial conditions of these pillars and we illuminate it with the NIF laser to try and study how those pillars form. They turn out to be very challenging on the one hand. You ha had to do a lot of searching with design to find targets that worked. And yet when I found them, they actually worked extremely well. Surprisingly good analogs for what we actually see up in the sky. Targets that help us measure radiation transport. What, what we're doing within radiation transport targets um, is the laser is actually hitting the gold wall of the whole ROM, generating x-rays, and that is actually hitting particular materials, which we are evaluating the radiation transport through. What makes these targets especially challenging is the actual low density foam that we use. This type of foam is actually so delicate that we can't even touch it without having it break apart. And lastly, targets made for X-ray diffraction studies. X-ray diffraction can help us identify the phase of the material and the components of the material. So if we wanted to understand what a material looked like in its atomic structure, we can use X-ray diffraction as one of our tools to understand and characterize the material. What's unique about X-ray diffraction targets of the NIF is that the target and the diagnostic are actually integrated together. Most of our targets are a small hole ROM, but the X-ray diffraction target is actually a flat 3 to 5 millimeter disc put on a larger diagnostic, and that diagnostic survives the NIF shot, so we can bring it out and then look at our X-ray film. January February feature of SNTR is chock full of details about each of these targets and more, so click here for more information. Get your fill of news and information about NIF here, and subscribe to keep getting a fun inside look at every issue of SNTR. That's all, folks.